Welcome everybody. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is just the basics of getting started with Kali Linux. I get asked oftentimes about uh, popular Linux distributions such as Kali and the Flare VM and Remnix. And so I'm going to put some videos together for all of those. First and foremost, uh, Kali Linux is, is a Linux distribution. And one of the reasons that it's popular is because there are a number of very popular and common penetration testing tools that come already installed with the distro. So you don't really learn Kali. You download Kali because it has all of these great tools already installed and configured, and then you learn the tools. So I would say, you know, from a, a learning and a practitioner perspective, Kali Linux is a great place to start because you, you can use it for learning. The tools are already there. It saves you the time and the hassle of having to try to install, um, you know, install them, of course, and very similar as a practitioner. A lot of practitioners then also use Kali Linux for, you know, real world penetration testing. So um, to get started, and let's just, I just want to focus in this video about the basics of Kali, you know, typically how I use it. And, and keep in mind, I have not done very much penetration testing in my career. Um, I do find it useful, though, also as a reverse engineer and a malware analyst. There are certainly tools that it, can, that it contains that sometimes it's just easier for me to jump into a Kali VM uh, to get access to those tools rather than relying on some of the other VMs that I often use, such as Remnix or trying to install or configure it myself. So um, absolutely something that I that is in my, my toolkit, just not a distro I use all the time. So first things first, go to Kali.org. That's where you'll find Kali Linux. You'll have a download button, which is, again, probably the quickest route, and your documentation. Now, when it comes to documentation, you'll see you have a couple of options here. You have the Kali Linux documentation and then the Kali Tools documentation. Now, uh, the Kali Linux documentation, of course, is going to be the more immediately helpful because it's going to have information such as the introduction, the installation, information about virtualization, and, and other options here. So certainly take some time and read through this documentation. Uh, if Kali is something completely new to you, again, I'm going to take you through the install process as I normally go through it, which will be the down and dirty. If you look at the Kali Tools documentation, this will be for once you have Kali installed and now you're going to learn or are learning about the different tools. Um, and we'll take a look at none of the tools in particular, but just how they're organized once we get into the Kali VM. Uh, so this will, of course, be something that will be far more helpful for you once, you're, once your Kali is up and running. And this is just a great place to go to see what tools are available and, and then, of course, read about the documentation. And just like getting started with Kali, I recommend looking at the documentation for the tools that you're using because oftentimes that documentation can provide clarity as to what the tool does as well as all of the options and different ways in which you can use it. Okay, so if we go back to the main Kali page, we'll follow the download link. And now we have a couple of options here. For the most part, 99% of the time for me when I'm running Kali Linux, I'm using a virtual machine. You do have options to run installer images, which allows you to install it directly into hardware. And I have in previous jobs used that uh, to install Kali on hardware that we would ship out to clients. Um, but the 99% for me is the virtual machine. And that's what I'm going to follow here today and, and expect most of you that will be the easiest way for you to get started as well. There are some other options. Again, documentation covers that. So let's go ahead. We'll select the virtual machine option. Now, this is really what makes getting a distribution like Kali helpful. You can now download these pre-built virtual machines. Once you download them, you extract the archive that it comes in. You can now run that virtual machine with whatever virtualization software you choose. So you do have some options, uh, VMware, VirtualBox, Hyper-V, QEMU. I, again, I'm, I guess, became a VMware user years and years and years ago. So it's just primarily my go-to. I like VMware. I have a license for VMware. And so that's some of the differences here. VMware is commercial software. It does have a free use, terms of use, as long as it's, I believe, non-commercial usage, then you're fine. VirtualBox, on the other hand, is completely open source. So it has all of the features, more or less, that uh, the commercial version of VMware has, but you don't have any of that licensing restrictions. So it's up to you. If you're not sure, uh, the, the free versions of VMware work pretty well. I've never had any issues with them. You can also grab VirtualBox, and you'll have a very, very similar experience for the most part. Now, when it comes to downloading these, you can just click on the, you know, the thumbnail here. That will start your download. 
If you prefer to do a torrent or check the file hashes, the download hashes, you can show those checksums as well. The download itself will take a little bit of time, 2.9 gigs, depending on your internet connection. And then because it's a large archive, it takes just a little bit of time to extract. So at this point, go ahead, download. I'm going to grab VMware, but download whatever version you'd like, and we'll pick up here in just a second inside the actual virtual machine. All right, once you've opened your, your fresh new Kali VM with your virtualization software, it'll go through the boot process and then present you with a login. Uh, the login is Kali Kali, and you should be able to type both that username and password in and hit enter, and that will now take us to a desktop. Okay, before we get into Kali, one of the first things that I generally do is I like to get, you know, with a VM when it's still in a fresh state. That is, I haven't transferred any files into it, I haven't used any tools or done anything really inside of it, is to take, a, take an early snapshot. Uh, now, most of the time, I will go ahead and follow the instructions for updating the system so that, you know, if there's any updates for the operating system, as well as typically these distributions will then also update the tools that they've installed so that I have kind of fresh and most recent versions of everything that's in the distro. And then I take my baseline or my clean snapshot. So, you know, with virtual machine software, we can snapshot and that's really helpful because then down the road, if I need to, you know, reset after learning a tool or an update breaks something or there just becomes a problem, it's easy to go back to a clean state. And you don't, of course, have to go through the process of downloading and, um, and running these updates again. There is one other thing I like to consider before taking that initial baseline snapshot. Um, well, I guess there's actually two. One, do I take a snapshot when I'm logged into the desktop or do I shut down the virtual machine? If I shut down the virtual machine, then the snapshot size is a little bit longer because you don't have to capture all of that, you know, the, the actual virtual memory of the, of the operating system at the time that you take the snapshot. However, if it's shut off, then you have to wait for it to boot up. So I typically take a snapshot with, uh, you know, at, at a desktop session, logged in and the operating system up and running. The other is the network configuration. And I will typically put my network configuration into either a host only mode um, that's the, again, by and large, this is the option I choose. You can also consider uh, disabling the network adapter. Either one of those will then make sure that the machine can't connect out to the internet. Your other options typically with your virtualization software then will be NAT, which will allow it access to the internet through your host, or Bridged, which allows it to connect directly to whatever network your host is on. So it becomes another system on your, your proper network. Um, the reason that I don't typically allow it to connect out to the internet is because I, depending on what I'm doing, I don't want to accidentally start scanning some host or, um, you know, just allow any traffic to escape unless I'm ready to do that intentionally. So it's just a good practice to get into. Um, and setting that before you take the snapshot then allows that to just be the default state when you resume or, or restore from that snapshot. Okay, you can see with the default layout here, a couple of icons on the desktop and then some icons up in the system tray. You have multiple desktop sessions that you can uh, that you can switch through. Terminal, Firefox, uh, probably a note, put, yeah, mouse pad, so a text editor. Um, and so those are all uh, kind of the basic things. Okay, but if you're here, you're probably looking for the tools and starting to utilize those. And so if you click on the Kali Linux icon, you'll see that you have not only your favorites, and usual applications, but then they're organized and they're sort of organized through, you know, in a, in a numerical order kind of through the penetration testing process, information gathering, vulnerability analysis, you know, assessing web applications and maybe database systems, moving into password attacks and, and so forth and so on. And so now you can go through each one of these categories and you can see what tools are available. So if you're not familiar, say with the process of information gathering, it's, I think, best to read up a little bit about it, but maybe you don't even know where to start. Well, you can take a look at the tools that are available here underneath this category, and you can do a little bit of research on them. You can read their documentation, maybe find further videos about how to use them. Um, you may find that there's a couple of tools that do the same type of job, uh, and so you have to figure out which one is exactly the one that works for you. Now, keep in mind that a lot of these tools are meant to interact with with targets across an internet. 
And so you don't want to start scanning anything that you do not have permission for. And that typically means legal permission. You have a contract or a, you know, some official legal document that says from that company that you are able to go ahead and run those tools against their network, against their assets. And so you'll see that a lot of folks, once they get to this point where they have Cali and have these tools, they want to they wanna start testing. And so that's where you have to start building out a little bit more of a local lab environment. And that could be as simple as just downloading another VM. There's a lot of vulnerable VMs that you can download, running it in the same process in your virtualization software, and then leaving them on a uh, like a host-only network because then they can access each other, but they won't be able to get out to the internet from wherever your network is on. Now you can get really complex with your lab environment. So that's, I think to me, that's the quickest and easiest way. A couple of virtual machines, both on the same uh, network that's you know host only, so it's not allowed to get out to the internet. And that's really it for getting started with Kali Linux. Um, you'll probably find, at least I find, that with a lot of these distributions such as Kali, there's probably far more tools than I really need or will ever use. But Linux distributions tend to be a little bit lighter uh, versus their Windows counterparts. The operating system itself just tends to not be quite as large. And so having all of these tools here already installed and configured at your disposal really doesn't have much of a significant impact. I hope that was a good introduction and enough to help get you started and just understand what Kali is. It's a you know pre-configured Linux distro with a bunch of tools. So you use Kali in order to learn all of these tools. Um, so I hope you have fun learning those tools, starting to think about building a lab environment. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments or feedback. Uh, they are open and I'm always looking for new ideas or things that, that are interesting to you so that I know where to spend my time you know, building new content that might be able to help you go into the next steps from here. So until then, I'll talk to you later.